guys, I'm Cheeky MZ and welcome back to another episode of The Cat Hall. We are here in this lovely new studio that definitely isn't a nice corner of my parents' shed and today I have another load of vintage shirts to show you guys. I found these gorgeous shirts on my travels across Southeast Asia and I was absolutely mind blown at the selection of kits they had from all different countries and eras so obviously I had to buy a shit ton of them. I actually got so many that I bought an extra suitcase while I was there. Imagine airport security opening up my suitcase and there's just a load of vintage shirts in there. They'd think I was a smuggler. When I go traveling in April, I'm going to give myself a limit on how many shirts I can buy because fuck, they were heavy. My collection is actually getting a bit out of hand now. I think I counted 72 the last time I checked. I've gotten a bit obsessed. I have a bit of a problem with collecting things. It seems we both got autism, haven't we? Also, I'm kind of thinking about starting a new series where I design and create my own vintage inspired football shirts. Like, I have no idea how to even start, but I think it would be cool to vlog the process and design my own custom kits. I've got so many ideas, so many. Anyway, let me know down below which shirt was your favorite and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. And follow my other socials if you want to see more. Right, I have been wanting this shirt for quite a while now, so when I ended up walking past it in a vintage mall in Bangkok, I could not believe my luck. <laughs> Look at it guys, all glossy and shit. I feel like this is just such an iconic buy-in kit. This is actually an unusually small 97.98 home shirt. It's tight on me and I'm only little. Opal sponsor? Mmm. I think I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm a big sponsor fan, love a good sponsor, and I'm very picky with what I like in a shirt sponsor. Opal are like an S tier sponsor logo, up there with Candy, O2, and the Portsmouth Beanie Baby kit. Retro Munich badge, cute little collar, this thing, <laughs> it's got everything. As you can see, the shirt has seen better days and has an unfortunate tug on it, like just here, but she's still cute and I had to get it because I never find vintage shirts in my size. It fits real nice, so that's a win. What wasn't a win, however, was Bayern's season in this kit, coming second in the Bundesliga to Kaiserslautern and then getting knocked out of the Champions League by Dortmund. I, I like it and I'm sure the Bayern Munich players at the time did too. So, it wasn't all bad. So this shirt is actually so cool. I've been wanting a Celtic shirt for ages, especially ones from this Umbra period where they were just making some absolutely gorgeous kits. This is definitely one for the rack. Love it. Love the way it looks. Don't really love how it looks on me. <laughs> The lime green against the black is such a cool colour combo. The faded Celtic clovers in the background are also a really nice touch. I also love the badge in the middle with the big Umbro logo. I think they did such a good job on this one. 
This shirt was worn when Celtic finished as runners-up in the Scottish Premiership and lost the Scottish Cup final to Rangers. So, like the Munich one, no happy memories here, but at least they failed in style. Okay, so I had a bit of confusion trying to figure out what this shirt actually was. There were a lot of mixed opinions on the internet. Some websites said it was the 99-2000 away. Some said it was the 2000-2001 third. So somebody was lying to me. I posted a photo on Instagram of myself in this shirt and asked my followers if they knew when it was from. It seems that this shirt was used twice in two different seasons as the away kit. It was used during the 1999-2000 as well as the 2000-2001 season. Nobody was lying to me, I was just being slow. <laughs> This was back when they weren't trying to squeeze every dollar out of us and away shirts would cycle every couple of years. Thank the 2010-2011 Premier League season for that. I love the simplicity of this shirt. I like the plain blue colour and I like the darker blue on the trim and I love the Tekka sponsor. Love them. Love the 99-2000 Champions League final away shirt as well. Oh, great sponsor. In this period, they would win the Champions League in the first season and their 28th La Liga title in the next. Some notable players who wore this shirt were Raul, Steve McManaman and Luis Figo, who infamously made the switch from Barca in the summer of 2000. I'm sure the Barcelona fans were very understanding. Okay, so I think this one has got to be my favourite shirt in my collection. Yes, more than the Fiorentina one. It is the Liverpool 89 91 home kit. <laughs> this shirt is such a classic and when I saw it on throwback jerseys, I snapped it up so fast. The candy logo is such an iconic Liverpool sponsor. I always wondered what candy was, like what do they do? What do they sell? Something cool, surely. Fridges! Candy sell fridges! So, I guess it was something cool after all. It's always such a hard toss-up between Carlsberg and Candy for my favourite sponsor logo, but I think I have to go with Candy. This shirt has a really weirdly similar pattern to the Soviet Union kit of that same season, and it feels like someone copies someone because they just look so alike. The 89-91 season was fantastic, but also bittersweet for Liverpool as they won their last league title for 30 years under Kenny Daglish. Who knew at this time we would have to go through so many ugly kits until we won it again in 2019. Notable mention for this warrior monstrosity. In fact, all of the warrior period. Jesus Christ. There were some real legends who wore this shirt, including John Barnes, Steve McMahon, and Ian Rush. I have to say, I think John Barnes wore this shirt the best.
So the last shirt I have to show you guys is the 96-97 River Plate Home Shirt. I am so aware that I also rock a Bokka shirt from time to time, but I just like football shirts. Please don't make me choose a side. This kit is very striking and has such an interesting background. This is what Adidas used to be about guys. Look at the effort they put into this shirt and compare it to any one of the 24 euro kits. Besides the Tintin one, but I just like Tintin. My favourite thing about this shirt has absolutely got to be the river plate badges in different shades all over the background. I also love the red sash line and the stripes on the sleeves as well. I think it's such a nice shade of red. Let's not forget about the Quilmes sponsor logo guys, who are also the Bocca sponsors for some reason. Argentinians must just really be into Quilmes beer. If you're an Argentinian watching this, I am not trying to say you're a nation of alcoholics. <laughs> Please tell me about this beer down in the comments. I love this font of the logo. It is so clean and I think it has to be in my top 5 sponsors now. 